Okay, welcome back. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about the differences between dominant and recessive alleles. Uh, we hinted at this today in doing the human trait lab and talking about all of the different types of traits that we could have inside of our bodies and figuring out who had which traits, so on and so forth. Uh, what we'll do now is actually discuss how those traits came about. How did those traits end up showing in you, the organism? Uh, we have to start by reviewing this idea of gene expression, though, uh, because for every trait, uh, there is a gene. That means that for every single thing that we talked about today, for um, which thumb ended up on top, if you have you know, a bent pinky, whether you can roll your tongue, all of those are traits, and every single one of those traits has a section of DNA called a gene that's going to code for a protein that makes those things happen. And so uh, recall that we talked about how DNA coils up into this stuff called chromatin, which would be right here, and then that chromatin supercoils into our chromosome. Okay, So if we could pull out one little strand of DNA, uh, this here might be our gene, uh, let's say, for freckles. So we'll call this the gene for freckles, and I'll continue to use freckles the rest of the PowerPoint. Okay, so that means that this little section of DNA right here contains the code or the gene uh, to determine whether or not you have freckles. All right, and depending upon what that says will determine whether or not you have freckles. Now, we have to learn a couple of new vocabulary words. We'll start uh, with some words that we already know. You guys should already know and understand trait. Uh, and trait is a characteristic that is inherited from your parents. And so you either got freckles from your parents or you did not get freckles from your parents. And by now you guys should understand this word gene and understand that that is a section of DNA on a chromosome that codes for a protein. And so what we'll say is we'll say that uh, this is a chromosome. I know it's a really rough sketch, but it'll work. And then we're going to say that this little yellow section right here uh, is where we're going to find the uh, DNA for our freckles. Okay, so we'll call this little section on the chromosome our gene. Now, the new word is this word allele. An allele is simply an alternate form of a gene. And so let's say that we could take a peek inside of uh, what this DNA says, and let's say uh, that DNA sequence is uh, A, T, C, G, T, A. And let's say that that is the code for having freckles. Uh, but then let's say that that could also say A, A, T, C, C, G, and that would be the code for no freckles. So either one of these uh, could end up in the same location on the same chromosome, and one of them is going to be a DNA code for freckles, the other one's going to be a code for no freckles. Uh, we call these alternate forms of that gene an allele. Okay, and I'll refer to those as alleles throughout the rest of this uh, presentation. All right, another little bit of review that we need to do is this idea of homologous chromosomes. Remember uh, that these homologous chromosomes. Uh, first of all, to help you remember that, remember that this prefix homo means same, so that should help you remember same chromosomes. Um, remember that these guys are very, very similar. They're going to have the same length, they're going to have the exact same genes on them, and you got one of them from mom, and you got one of them from dad. Okay, so what that basically means is that if we're interested in freckles, that means that mom gave you... Uh, one gene for freckles and then dad gave you a gene for freckles also. And so what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to figure out uh, which one of those wins. Okay, so let's say that mom gave you the allele for no freckles. and We can see that uh, DNA sequence right here. And then let's say that dad gave you the allele to have freckles and now you have this sequence right here. Well, that begs the question, which one wins? How do we know which one of those alleles is going to actually show up in you if you have both. Okay, now that brings in the idea of dominant and recessive. Um, dominant alleles are alleles that will be expressed if they are present. That means that if either your mom or your dad gave you a dominant allele, it is going to be the one that is expressed in you because you have the dominant allele. Uh, dominant alleles are always represented by a capital letter. 
Uh, what that means is that we don't always have to write out the DNA sequence because that DNA sequence could be thousands of characters long. And so we just represent it by one letter and we make sure that that letter is a capital. Uh, recessive alleles, on the other hand, will only be expressed in the absence of a dominant trait. So if there's no dominant trait at all, you didn't get one from mom and you didn't get one from dad, that's the only time you're going to get that. Uh, these guys are represented by a lowercase letter. All right, so the trait that we're looking at is for freckles. So let's just randomly, arbitrarily choose the letter F uh, to represent the alleles or the gene combinations to make freckles. Okay, what letter you choose does not matter. It's what's called arbitrary. You can make it up. So I'm choosing F because that's what freckle starts with. And so from here on out, the rest of this PowerPoint, let's call capital F uh, the dominant allele. And the dominant allele is to have freckles. And then from here on out, let's call lowercase F the recessive allele. And let's say that that means that you don't have freckles. All right. Uh, so let's look at an example. In example one, uh, first of all, let's replace the DNA sequences that we've been using. Uh, let's just scratch those guys out and let's replace those with our actual letters that we just said. Okay, so this DNA sequence would be a sequence that codes for no freckles. So we'll replace that with just the regular old lowercase f. Uh, this sequence over here would be a DNA sequence that would code for freckles. So to make things easier, we'll just scratch that out and we'll replace that with a capital F. Okay, so here uh, we're given one dominant allele and we're given one recessive allele. Now, if you'll remember back to the previous slide, we said that if there is a dominant allele, that is the one that will always win every single time. It doesn't matter if it's matched up with a one recessive or if there's two dominants, the dominant trait will always win. So that means that this person would have freckles. And the reason why it has freckles is, or this person has freckles is because there is at least one dominant allele. Okay, so now let's go to another example. In the second example, uh, let's say that mom gave you the dominant. And then let's say that dad also gave you the dominant allele for freckles. Well, this example is very easy. You have to have uh, the dominant trait, which is freckles. So this person will have freckles, they're going to carry the dominant trait because all that they have is the allele for the dominant trait, which is freckles. Okay. And in our third and final example, uh, here we're going to assume that mom gave you the recessive allele for no freckles. And then we're going to assume that dad gave you also the recessive allele for no freckles. Uh, since both of these are recessive, that means that the recessive allele will be expressed. And that means that this person will not, repeat, not have freckles. This is the only time and the only way uh, that a recessive trait can and will be expressed. It has to be paired up with two uh, recessive alleles. Other than that, it's not going to work. Okay. Now, as if your brain wasn't on overload enough with vocabulary in this unit, I'm going to throw four more words at you. The good news is they're really, really easy. Uh, when we refer to... Uh, the genetic makeup of an organism, uh, basically when we refer to um, the organism's alleles, uh, which ones it has, uh, these letters are referred to as the organism's genotype. That is the organism's genetic makeup. Okay. Now, what these guys code for is then called the phenotype. Okay. And the phenotype is the expression of the genotype. Basically, it's the physical appearance uh, of the organism because of the genotype. So if you think about how uh, the first two letters in physical are pH and the first two letters of phenotype are pH, that's going to help you remember that uh, the phenotype is the physical expression. Okay, So here, uh, the genotype would be capital F, capital F. Uh, the phenotype then would be freckles. And then here the genotype is little f, little f. The phenotype would be, uh, excuse me, I made the mistake there. That would be no freckles. Okay. And I brought this picture in because it's a good picture to help represent that. Uh, these would be flowers. And here they're saying that the genotype uh, for flower color is capital P, capital P. And then the phenotype is purple. And then here we can see that the genotype is capital lowercase. So that's going to code for purple flowers. And then down here at the bottom, 
you've got two lowercase letters and that's going to code for white flowers. All right, uh, the next two words are called heterozygous and homozygous. Now, both of these words refer to the genotype. They refer to the letters or the genetic makeup, what those alleles say. Um, I'm going to make this really, really easy on you. Okay, uh, the first word is heterozygous and heterozygous is a genotype that contains one dominant and one recessive allele okay uh, this word hetero means different okay so anytime you see the word hetero or prefix hetero it means different so these two letters are different they're not the same all right the next uh, word that you guys need to know is called homozygous uh, homozygous alleles, or excuse me, homozygous genotypes um, are two that are exactly the same. So here we have two dominants. Uh, so these guys are the same. Here we have two recessives. That means that these guys are the same. And that shouldn't surprise us because we all should know by now that the prefix homo means same. All right, thanks.